What's the coolest stone you've ever seen? Oh my God, there's so many. Uh, and what, what, what defines, is it rarity? Is it just raw beauty? What, what captivates your I like excitement? a storied stone. Mm. I have a very beautiful Fairburn agate, which is multiple layers. And there's something I call agate paralysis because to polish it, you have to go through the layers, which means you're destroying the layers. And maybe what should be done is it should be like a movie where you, you film the entire process of cutting and polishing so that it's not dead. In other words, what was the diamond when it started rough? The, the, the rough diamond is gone. But if you could sort of do a filmic version yeah, of a view. cutting process so that the, the stone would exist in a, from a pre-polished to a polished state all as a kind of mm. NFT or something. <laughs> Another, that, that should be an <laughs> NFT, that's right. <laughs> so the other thing I fantasize about is how pattern recognition technology will probably in the future allow us to discover all kinds of amazing stones, including, for example, fossil skulls, fossil skulls of humans. Mm. Now it's kind of a chance process that you discover a skull in East Africa, but why not have a drone moving constantly, scanning for pattern recognition of human skull, human teeth, very slowly, and just then- Just on the surface, you mean? Just above the surface, just 10 feet above the surface, 20 feet above the surface. No, 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 sorry, you, you think you'll be able to find skulls on the surface? Yes, yes, in the middle of a place that no one has looked, which, and these areas are vast, right? So it could be found on the surface, then move to the next layer, then, then find it under the surface as well. There's LIDAR, there's all kinds of ways. We're finding jungles and uh, jungle cities in, in under the Amazon that people didn't know about. Do you think so, there's something out there that would just blow your mind? Oh, for sure, for sure. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. Oh man. And uh, how much of it is a little bit underground, right? Or how much of it is in the ocean? Yeah. I mean, here, right here, we are in the Bay Area. We know that much of the Native American civilization here was under the bay because 6,000 years ago, the bay was dry. It was a river, not a bay. Mm -hmm. And so all of those, whatever material, culture, archeological traces existed there are now at least preserved under the water. So I think we're just beginning to, to touch the- Could be treasure too. I mean, like literally, like you said, we lose the wisdom or we lose the, lose the knowledge, but I, I mean, um, we, I mean, if the if there's the pyramids, right? It's the great wonders of the world. There might be other wonders that are completely lost. Yeah, just. So, so I mean, one of the stones you asked about stones, I like. I I like stones. For example, every now and then, dinosaurs would eat rocks as gizzard stones, and then you find them in their in their guts in their bones well every now and then they would eat a piece of petrified wood so the idea that something was a tree and then stone and then swallowed by a dinosaur and ground up in the gizzard and polished and then left in a you know yeah so i, I like things that have been through dramatic <laughs> there's dramatic a story history. there there's a story. yeah i mean that that's okay the, the, the really fascinating thing why uh, seeing allah or crosses in the stone is it feels like the stone has wisdom because it, it's been there's a, there's a it's been through so many generations of humans. It's like bigger, right? It's seen it all. Also, it's also the intellectual question of intelligent design. In other words, when people say intelligent design, mostly it's bogus. But there are several interesting examples of actual intelligent design, meaning. When is a stone the product of artifice, and when is it a geofact produced by nature? And that's, that was an important discovery in the 19th century, the, the zone of percussion, it's called, the, the percussion zone. Or how do you know that a signal from out of space is an intelligent signal, and as opposed to hydrogen doing something or some natural thing? That's the genuine problem of intelligent design. How do you know if it's pi, Maybe if it's E, if it's some, uh, you know, pattern, is, how do you know that that's an intelligent signal? How do you know that an artifact in the ground is, you, you know, we'll, we'll see in the clouds a, a face. It's called pareidolia. We have a, 
a kind of a built-in ability to see faces where they really aren't there, right? That's why kids like clowns. You know, we've evolved that, so babies evolve it to recognize their parents and so forth. But when is it a projection, and when is it really in the in the in the stone? And that was a big question with the rise of fossils. You know, if you find a a curly thing, is that life or is it non-life? Is it you know? People have made this mistake before. You know, they'll find a rock on on the moon or Mars. They say, "Oh, this is a, a face or whatever." Well, you know, no, that's that's just projection. That's pareidolia. I guess throughout science, you have this problem of s signal. It just because something is beautiful doesn't mean it was. I mean, that's it, that's not a good signal to determine if it's intelligent design or natural evolution or natural design. Just because you're you see a stone that just yeah the pattern is is incredible. How do you wow. how do you know how, how do, do you know, know it's a fossil? Is a, is one question. Namely, the you know the remnants of an organism, and how do you know if it was manipulated by a human? You know, w w this is a big problem in in trying to figure out the oldest art. If you find scratchings on a bone, is that a tally? Is it is it someone marking her her menstrual period? Is it phases of the moon, or is it trampling by an antelope? And that's that's called the science of taphonomy to discern when a marking on a bone or a stone is, in a sense, a an artifact or a geofact or a, an antelope effect. And that's it's an intellectually challenging question. And people want to fantasize; they'll find a stone that looks like a carving that's three hundred thousand years old. Generally, I think those are just odd stones. Yeah, you don't find the explosion of carved stone until around 60,000 years ago, 50, 60,000 years ago, there seems to be something that paleoanthropologists call the creative explosion or the big bang of the mind that produces a kind of ability to, to see in the distance, to identify a shape in an object, to create a shape in an object that you don't get. The Neanderthals don't seem to have ever done what we would call art. Mm. That's a very interesting phenomenon, you know, but it requires that you have some understanding when, when is something art and when is it just, oh, that's a rock that looks like a face. Or some, not necessarily understanding, but a conception that's mutually agreed upon right. that we're able to, because maybe Neanderthals, maybe fish have a conception of art. They just, uh, and this, this also gets back to your question about professional bias and ideology because. There's a huge reward for finding the oldest art. Yeah, yeah. If if everyone says it's fifty thousand years ago, and you find one that's three hundred thousand years ago, that's a huge discovery. So there's a there's a bias, and this has been one of the things that's led to the probably the over proliferation of different species of hominids, because there's no academic reward for finding. Yet another example of someone else's species. Yeah. But there's a huge reward if you can find, you know, uh, a Lex Friedmanite, you know, new, you can name it after yourself or whatever. Yeah. Uh, new fossil. Yeah. That, there's a huge professional reward to be the first at something. And so those types of professional rewards also influence science and what kind of science gets done.